Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to the FSS Football Channel. And today, it is it is the biggest game of our group. We are playing Czech Republic. Of course, we drew last game to Scotland 1-0. And while, while realistically we are already through, four points for me is enough to get you through at minimum as the best third place team or as one of the best third place teams. But we'll look, we want to win the group because we want to be playing majority of our games at Wembley when it comes to the knockout stage. And by winning our group, we do that. Yes, we're going to play the second best team from Group F. Looks like it's probably going to be Germany. But, if we beat Germany, we've got a fairly easy run. While also, I mean, we're going to be playing at Wembley, at home. Home advantage is massive, especially in a tournament where you're playing everywhere. If like, you look at Wales, for example, they've, they've played at Baku. They've gone to wherever that they were. Was they in Rome um, at the Stadio Olimpico? For their last group game. Doing loads of travelling. Isn't what you want to be doing. When you've got a few days between games. So the fact we're going to be at at home. At Wembley. In a in a place where all these players will know. Is a massive advantage. And I think. We have to win this game against the Czechs. And I think that it, we should be expected. To beat the Czechs. Czechs have they've been good. But we should be able to beat them. So this is how, for me, we beat the Czechs and stuff we have to look out for for the Czechs if we are to win this game. So without further ado, let's get into it. So this is currently how the group sit here at Euro 2020. Of course, we are Group D. So top of our group is Czech Republic. They've got four points, as do we, but they are above us on goal difference, having beaten Scotland 2-0 and obviously drawn with Croatia 1-0. We're then in second, also on four points. However, we only beat Croatia 1-0. And we nil, we drew nil nil with Scotland. Croatia are, are then third, and Scotland are then fourth. Now look, Czech Republic, look, they're a bit of a weird team. I think against Croatia, they didn't look great. I mean, they got, a, a, in my opinion, the worst penalty I've ever seen given. Uh, at least from what I can think of, and in recent memory, it's an awful decision to give a penalty. So uh, against Croatia, I weren't too impressed with them. Against Scotland, I thought they they were okay, not amazing again. But Patrick Schick is their danger man. He, he has scored goals at, in this competition. He's got three. Obviously, that one amazing goal from the halfway line. So he's their danger man, really. But at the same time, they have got a lot of other good players. They've got Thomas Suchek, who's obviously listed up in the Premier League for West Ham. Same with Vladimir Kufal, again, a West Ham player. Who's got a great delivery on him. They've got Vlasic in goal, who I think is a good goalkeeper. I just, I just think this Czech Republic team are a decent side. But if we're at our best, it doesn't matter who the opposition are, we can beat them. And that's something we haven't been. And it will have to be put right today if we are to beat the Czechs. It simply has to be put right. And here's some of the things I believe we need to be doing if we are to improve this team. So the first of all thing I think we have to do, and we really must do it. And look, it's the same problem Manchester United have had all season. And I've, I've lambasted Ole and Solskjaer for it. We have to play with a higher tempo. We are far too happy with our defensive midfielders or our midfielders in general not looking up, simply passing it sideways, passing it backwards, playing the safe option. We have to be quicker. We have to try and get it forward and take risks. We are so risk adverse. It's unbelievable. You have to take a risk sometimes. Play, play the harder ball, but it's going to unlock something. Because what happens right now, we get... We get the ball and we start passing it sideways, backwards. We'll get the ball to Rice. We'll get the ball to Phillips. And first time, they're knocking it back to centre-backs. So and realistically, they need to be getting the ball and driving forward. Because all this time we spend knocking it sideways and backwards, what it's allowing teams to do is get back. And then that's when you're looking for the absolutely un unbelievable and unstoppable ball to get through to score a goal. When realistically, we just play a bit quicker. We play it let's say, a 10% risky ball, you're going you, you're gonna to do, what, about two of them, and then you, you might get a really good chance. But instead, we're, we're, we're knocking it about playing the safe ball, playing the balls that there's no risk at really at all. And then we get to the final third, 
And then we're, we're having to... Ex- well, we're expecting our teams to play the 80% risky ball to try and score us a goal. When it's never really going to work. Of course, eventually it might happen. Obviously, we saw against Croatia it happen when Raheem Sterling scored. Chances are it's not going to happen. So we have to be quicker. We have to be trying to get this the ball from back to front a lot, lot quicker. And obviously, that doesn't mean going route one. It's just trying to be more positive, looking up, finding a path, getting players like a Billy Gilmore did what like Billy Gilmore did for Scotland. Get him on the ball and drive forwards, dribble forward, and you're going to create more chances and you're going to get more goals because of it. You think about the chances we got against Scotland. I can't really name one from open play we got. Of course, we had the one where John Stones hit the bar or the post from the corner, but that one from open play. We didn't create anything from open play. And another day, Scotland would have beaten us. So we have to be quicker on the ball. We must be willing to take risks. We need to get Harry Kane more in the game. I think Harry Kane at times does drop too deep. And that is a problem with Harry Kane. But at the same time, I don't think we've got the players around him to do the best. You have to play Jane and Sancho for me. Get Jane and Sancho on that right wing. I don't think Foden works. I don't think Jay- Phil Foden works on the right wing. I think what we end up seeing, we see too many players wanting to play in the same positions, in the same roles. And that's sent more too central. Get a Sancho who will want to play out wide, but can come central. Grealish, same on the left. Get them playing. Both of them as well will be more than willing to run off Harry Kane and score goals. As such, we're getting Harry Kane more in the game. We're going to create more chances for Kane because we have creative and proper wingers who will look to dribble with the ball in Grealish and Sancho. And not just who will look to do so, are fantastic at doing so. And like I said, they're mass creators. So they're going to create chances. And when you've got Sancho and Kane, who've scored so many goals this season, and over the last three or four years, you're going to score goals. And then you have players like Raheem Sterling and Marcus Rashford on the bench to come on and make a difference and really exploit a back line that might be tiring at that point. I think that's how we will beat Czech Republic. So the team I would play... Pickford in goal. I think he's our best goalkeeper. He's been our first choice goalkeeper throughout the tournament, so he has to stay in. Our back four, I would go with Trippier. He wants to get forward and put crosses in. I don't think Rhys James played amazingly. I don't think he was awful, though. And Kyle Walker, I thought he had a really poor first game. I think Trippier's probably just a better player. So I'm going Trippier at right back. The back two, well, the two centre-backs, are John Stones and Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire might not be fit if he isn't. Tyro Mings plays. But I think if Harry Maguire is fit, Get Harry Maguire in straight away. Get him get him going. Because while we can afford to lose this game, we don't want to, but we can lose it. We don't have to necessarily win it and keep a clean sheet. So why not try and get Harry Maguire a few minutes, a, a game under his belt, before we get into the knockout rounds? Well, he has to play every week. And it has to. And we have to win it in the knockout. So I would play Maguire if... We can. And Luke Shaw goes at left back. Harry Maguire and Luke Shaw have a fantastic um, partnership together. We saw that throughout the season with Manchester United. As well as that, Ben Chirwell may not be able to play today. Same with Mason Mount due to Billy Gilmore testing positive for coronavirus. Because Mason Mount and Ben Chirwell met up with Billy Gilmore after the game or something like that, they are now self-isolating as well. So Luke Shaw kind of has to play at left back unless you put Trippier back there which I think he should play at right back. So Luke Shaw has to start left back. I would then change formation slightly. I would go from the 4-2-3-1 to a 4-3-3. Play Declan Rice as the lone DM. Play Henderson as a box-to-box. And Phil Foden as the as, as more of an attacking player. Sort of a Mazala role, I guess. In the sense that, Declan Rice isn't a dribbler and isn't someone who wants to drive out from the back four. Henderson can, can somewhat do it, but Phil Foden, I would have, preferably it would be Mason Mount. But Mason Mount, of course, like I said, isn't able to play today. So it's going to have to be Foden. Foden is a player that will get on the ball and likes to dribble and will create and will take a risk. I think that's what you kind of want. And from that deeper role, it, it means someone like a Rice doesn't have to do it. And we do still have the ability to be quick on the counter-attack 
and go from attack to defence really quickly. And Foden is the player that will be able to drive out of the of a defensive phase into the attacking phase. That that space in behind Kane now is open from where Manchester Mount would normally be when we're playing a 4 2 3 1. It now opens it up for Kane to drop a little bit and not go into a, a, a mass, massively congested area. It also allows a Jane Sancho and particularly a Jack Grealish on the left wing, who is obviously, I've, I've named my front three of Harry Kane, Sancho, and Grealish. It allows Grealish to come in slightly because there is space that now a Mason Mount isn't in. I think that then allows Jack Grealish to be dangerous. And like I say, Harry Kane can also drop deep into that role and have Jack Grealish have Jaden Sancho running into the space he leaves behind. Like we've seen a lot from Sterling, particularly in that Croatia game. I think that's how we win this game. And I think that is kind of the blueprint we have to take forward into this European Championships, especially into knockout round, when we're not going to have an easy game first round. If we can get past the Germany, then wow, we are, we are capable of doing anything. But like I said, it's going to be difficult. But that's how I see England beating Czech Republic in this game. Anyway, if you did enjoy this video, please do hit that like button below and subscribe if you are new and you haven't already. There will be a watch along for this game. Link will be in the description below and on the end card. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next one in a bit. Peace.